Hey everyone, I don't know if you're like me, but I am pretty much addicted to chocolate. I think addiction is the correct word to use. In fact, they've done a lot of studies to figure out if chocolate is addictive as any drug, and I can promise you that it is. I could have saved them all the trouble. There are a lot of, uh, well, I don't know if I could help them with this one. Well, what better thing to do than to combine two addictions, chocolate and model trains, and I'm going to do that via a mid-1990s Bachman set that I'm going to convert to DCC. I really hope you enjoy it. Please come join me on this chocolatey train adventure. See you in a moment. Hey everyone, today's episode is brought to you by Roll True Scale Models, in particular Roll True's line of precision made HO scale wheels. Roll True's precision wheels are made out of turned brass, each one turned individually and then blackened. This allows for the truest rolling wheel and the smoothest rolling wheel. Currently these wheels come in American freight sizes, that's 33 inch wheels, and they come in both short and long axle and they also come in IHC, AHM, and Riverossery replacement sizes. That includes the incredibly small pizza cutter wheels and the standard plastic wheels. Remember Roll True for the truest rolling wheels. All right, let's get into this tasty topic for today. Let's unbox this. And this is a, apparently a non-retail version of a mid 1990s, 1993, I think exactly this train set came out the chocolate town usa train set made by bachman now i i don't know the circumstances under which they made this train or how they sold it but apparently this is brand new and the set contains several items here including two buildings there is a barn and a station and it's totally intact they haven't been built there's the suburban station and here is the barn. You can see it's in the nice chocolatey colors, both white chocolate and milk chocolate, milk Hershey's chocolate. So pretty neat. I probably won't build those. I'll probably leave those in the bag. In fact, I think I've got other copies of these lying around somewhere. So I might build it, but probably not these ones. Let's see what's in this box. It's heavy. I thought it was just a spacer box, but I think it actually has something in it. Let's see, I'm not sure. It's, I mean, it's rattling around a bit. Maybe it is track. It's all track. It's unused easy track. Bachman easy track. So I'm not entirely sure what the non-retail version is. It's possible that it was designed for retailers to set the set out and have people play with it or they, they can show it off. Maybe that's what it's for. I don't know, but... Let's sort of take a look at each of the items here. So we have the transformer. Is there anything under here? Is there any kind of documentation? Hmm. No documentation. But, well, let's see. I think there was some documentation with the actual retail pack because I think I've seen it. But let's pick each one of these up one by one. Oof, this is a little bit tight. A little bit tight and I don't want to run afoul of the package police and have them leave comments about how I'm unpackaging things wrong. Okay, the Reese's Pieces peanut butter hopper. That's pretty cool. It has a, I mean, would it be coal or would it just be, I mean, it's not really Reese's Pieces, right? Because those are multicolored. I can't remember now. It's been a while since I had some. Either way, it is a very nice hopper with a, some sort of load like, that's in it. Maybe it's Okay, whatchamacallit, which is my favorite candy bar. If anyone wants to send one of their favorite doctors some good health food, whatchamacallits are always welcome. It is by far my favorite candy bar, by far. And I 
know, they've been out for a long time. Once I tasted one when they first came out, couldn't get enough of them, and I still can't. All right, Mr. Goodbar. I like them sometimes. I kind of like them when in the Halloween pack where it's not a lot. It's just too much peanuts if I get the whole bar, but I certainly like them. Very nice. Actually, these, these look pretty nice. They've got kind of a nice, like, nice glossy paint job. Hershey's syrup. Now, if I had, you know, if I could steal one of these Tinker cars and it really was full of Hershey's syrup, that would be bad. I'd probably just drink all the syrup and, and die like some sort of ill folk hero. I don't know. People would sort of remember me as both kind of awesome and sad at the same time, I guess. And then here is your wood Hershey's milk chocolate um, box cart. Very cool. Looks pretty much just like Hershey's bar wrapper. I like it. And these are all, of course, new, so they're all in absolutely great shape. And then it even has a caboose. I can get behind that. Hershey's Kisses Caboose. I like it. It's one of those uh, those old metal cabooses. Very cool. And actually, you know, these feel pretty decent. I think these are, I mean, they're Bachman, so they're certainly nothing wonderful. They're nothing like Rapido, but I think these will run pretty well on the track. I mean, it's, eh, can't blame that. I think it looks all right. All right, so there we go. Well, first thing you're going to do if you're gonna get a kit like this, I would recommend replacing the wheels and I'm gonna use Roll True's 950256, which are the uh, 9.5 millimeter, so those are 33 inch wheels. And then these are the long axle wheels. I think there are a lot of good reasons to switch to metal wheels. Um, the big one for me is of course, they, they track better, they roll better. Um, they would roll more true per se, but the one thing about plastic wheels is they start, you know, they grab the oil that's on the track and all the other gunk and they start to come off onto the track. And after a while, not only do you have a coating of carbon and oil in there, but you've also got a coating of plastic. And I just, they don't sound good to me either. I just like the sound of metal wheels. Um, and you know, the metal wheels are a little bit weightier. In fact, they are a lot weightier and they track better because of that. And they help the entire car gain a little bit of weight which is always a good thing. And they have less rolling resistance because the plastic has a tendency to get a little bit mushy. And because of that, you know, they, they really start to add um, rolling resistance. So metal wheels help in that area. All right, let's take a look at the locomotive. And it took me a minute to figure it out, but it's a General Electric B23-7. General Electric started making these in 1977, I think, and that is what um, our locomotive is. Here it is. We want to break it in for about 30 minutes on running in each direction. So we'll run it around the track, and of course it's brand new, so it runs really well. Wow, look at the look at the lighting hot spot. Really, really hot <laughs> spot. We'll definitely want to deal with that. Wow, look at that. It's like the sun bursting through the cab roof. I'm going <laughs> to definitely have to take that into account when I'm converting this. But wow, it's a nice looking set. Look at that. It looks great running down the track. And just listen to those metal wheels. They sound so much better than plastic. All right. Well, let's get one pass by as we're breaking this in. So I know it'll pull these cars no problem. So I think this will be a lot of fun. Okie dokie, let's go ahead and tear this down. And what we need to do with a lot of these sort of mid 90s Bachmans is we need to pull off the fuel tank. And you can see here there are two screws. The two screws are the only thing holding in the shell, but you don't want to try to pull the shell off like an Atherin shell because that just ain't going to work. And you're eventually going to break <laughs> the shell if you do that. Okay, so this is a slightly ladder. Um, version, I think. Look, it has it's uh, yeah, it has a lot of heft, a lot of weight to it. Um, so we can see that this nice little board on here, it controls the lighting. That's what those diodes are for. So the front light will work when it's going forward, and the rear light will work when it's going in reverse. Very nice. It's very hefty, but we have to figure out how to get around this weight. But this is actually an alternative version. This, I think, is an earlier version where the board is built into the top of the shell and it has uh, two arms that come down and contact the chassis. So we have two different versions. 
And actually, yes, I did have two of these. I have one of the old versions, which is this one, and one of the newer ones. And this one's broken. It looks like one of the motor mounts uh, is broken. That's no problem because I've got extras of those. So I will show you how to convert both of these to DCC. You're going to get a twofer out of this. So you're really getting your money's worth. Um, I guess that only it really applies to um, people who pay for YouTube Prime or whatever it is. So anyway, we'll go ahead and pull it towards. We are not going to use these, not going to use them at all because we're going to use a decoder. And again, this, uh, this little thing is broken here, so we're not going to use that. But one thing to notice is that the pickups are different um, on each of these. So one side comes in through the wires that you can see, the two black wires, and the other side of the pickup, which is going to be on the conductor side, come in through the frame via this piece of metal here, this semicircular piece of metal, and that transfers the electricity into the frame. The other side is just the wires attached to wheel wipers, and that's what comes up. So the engineer side on this particular model is in black, so we're gonna ignore the colors um, because we have the same issue here. This one's kind of interesting. Oh, it's heavy, gosh darn, it's really heavy. So this is kind of interesting because it's flipped. The, um, man, I just can't get over how heavy some of these things are. And I've got several of these Bachman chassis and they're all just chunky, but either way, sorry, you can't see it quite as well. I'll try to blow this up and enhance it a little bit. But there is that semi-circular wiper that transfer. So the frame actually handles the engineer side on this particular model. So, and the conductor side is going to come up through wires. And if you look, one of the wires coming up is black and the other one is red. So we're just going to completely forget about wire coloring in this model. We're just going to completely forget about it. You're just going to have to remember which side the frame picks up and which side the wires pick up. So let's go ahead and quickly remove this board. Again, it's actually kind of simplistically elegant, I guess, I kind of like that, but we're just not going to use it at all. We'll just ditch it and we need to clip the wires. There we go, okay. So the one lead you see sticking up is for the motor negative, and the positive is actually going to be brought in through a, uh, just a piece of copper, a wiper that's on the bottom of the motor. We'll get to that. So hang on a little bit. So wires handle the negative side and the frame handles the positive side. And we're going to have to make it so that the DCC controller can get to the wiper that's at the bottom. So what we're gonna need to do is take off this top weight here. There we go, take that off, no problem. And we start, and I think we should just be able to lift the motor straight out because that weight is what held this in. It's nice though, it's nice, <laughs> cute little flywheels. So again, you have to ignore the colors because all these should theoretically be red, but that's not the case. So we're gonna use red and black, but we're gonna ignore the sides that they're on. I'm not gonna go and redo all this wiring, that's pointless. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna unbend this, and this is, Again, the piece of copper or brass or whatever it is that picks up the electricity off of the frame. And we are going to solder a wire onto it. And then we're gonna put a piece of tape over the top of it so that it doesn't contact the frame anymore. So that's what we'll do. And we'll take this one apart. This one is held in by these, um, yeah, you can't, let me see if I can point them out here. But these little um, plastic retaining clips, maybe you can see them, let me blow this up for you. There you go. And you just need to pry those two clips out of there. And that's what induces pressure on the motor mounts for them to stay in. So we'll just pull them up here. There's one, pull this one, there we go. That's two, pull that up. And then um, a lot of times with these Bachman clips, you need to actually go and sort of press on the clip below because the, the retaining clip here had so much pressure on it, they just don't like to come out. So you just kind of push on these little tabs down below and now you can pull out the retaining uh, part of the mount and you can just pull the motor out. Be careful, you know, just be careful not to, you know, want to break those dog bone um, drive shafts. And again, we'll have to clip the wires here. And what we have, uh, the black wires, yeah, we're, yeah, 
there again they should be red so we're going to ignore we're just going to have to know which side is which and in this particular side the frame handles the negative side or the conductor side yeah it's nice it's a pretty smooth motor actually nice big flywheels and again the same thing here we're just going to uncoil this uh, little this little contact point and we're going to solder a wire onto it and then we're going to take tape and cover it up so that it doesn't touch the frame anymore and uh, with that little arrow there by the way that's just the side which side goes up okay so let's now that we've got these things pulled apart let's go ahead and solder our wire there you go um, if you want you can cut that contact down a lot closer but i i didn't bother i just went ahead and used it all but if you, I guess if you want to be more elegant, you can cut it down closer down here and um, solder in a wire, but uh, whatever this works. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and lay that tape down so that it will not contact the frame anymore and that will isolate the motor. And that's all we have to do to isolate the motor. So let's get the tape. Everything's harder to do on camera. Everything's just harder to do. All right, we'll go ahead and just, that's all we do. Tape the wire in there and there we go. We just want to make sure that all the metal is isolated so that it will not contact the frame when we put this motor back in. There we have it. Pretty nice. And again, the red and black, they may or may not make a difference <laughs> because we just have to remember which side the bottom was. So there we go. Put tape on there and by the way if you need a little bit more help I have other videos on how to do bare wire installs I can't do the entire thing here so be a little bit more familiar with bare wire installs uh, by watching my videos if you're not 100% sure what I'm doing but I promise it's exactly the same concept as I present in those videos all right so what we'll want to do here the way I like to do these Bachmans is I like to actually when you put it back in I pull the truck and then what I do is I set the drive shaft down in here or just like that and then I will put the uh, truck assembly back in and I will get the uh, dog bone drive shaft into the little slot it's harder to do this on camera than it is in real life let's see if I can get it there we go so it's just just like that now the whole thing the assembly is back together and the other side I already had in place when I inserted the motor. So we just want to put the screw in there and the reason why I didn't feed the wire back through that hole is we're going to use that hole later. So uh, screw this, there we go. And now one thing about Bachmann's is it's a hanging truck. So if you tighten down the screw too much, it'll make it so that the truck won't move around properly. See, it's too tight now. So we want to back it out just a little bit until the truck hangs down. There you go, just like that. So be careful when you're doing Bachmann's, any of their sort of kits from this era like that. And while we're in here, I'm gonna go ahead and super smooth this whole thing since uh, you know it's, it's new though. This one's the new one and it shouldn't have any problems, but let me go ahead and lubricate everything. This has not been used and it was built in the mid 1990s probably so let's just go ahead and get this in there okay should be good okay so the motor mount is back in there and we want to take this clip and you take the flat side so one side's angled and one side's flat you put the flat side up against the frame here and you just clip it into place and now that motor mount is solid and like i said the other one was broken i don't know if i just broke over time but i had another one and i just put that in there so now we've got this back together with a wire and it's now frame isolated motor. So we're doing pretty good. And this one will go in the same way. We've got our wires here. And um, if you remember, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this truck so that it's easier to put back in. Since this is a box, I'm gonna pull the truck out of here. Come on, there we go, okay. And now we can get to that, um, the dog bone drive shaft is still in there. So we will place in, if you just always remember that in this particular model, the wire contact for the motor goes towards the back, goes towards the rear. 
All right, so it's in there and I've got it attached to the, let's see, I got it attached to the, well, no, come on, get in there. Got it attached to the front and now we are not going to use the hole in this particular model. So we just get that dog, get that drive shaft. Come on, get in there, get in there. You can do, there it goes, okay. And now we will screw this back down into place. I think we're good to go. Yeah, I think so. So we'll go ahead and screw this back down. If I can actually do, if I can actually get it to engage the hole here. Come on, get in there. I think we're okay. All right. So let's turn it in again with Bachmann's. You don't want to overturn them because if you do that, then the truck will be way too stiff. But you can tighten it all the way down to the point where the truck doesn't move. And you might want to do that. You can kind of tighten it down until it doesn't move and then back it off about a half a turn or a full turn. That should be enough. Yeah, see, it's it's too tight. So let me back it off a little bit. And I think there you go. It should be good. All right, so now it has some movement. And make sure that those little tiny wire wiper transfers are on the frame. Okay, so now we want to put this weight back on there and we will go ahead and use the holes um, because I, I've got other holes on here that I can use up top, so I'm not too worried about that. So let's get this back in here. There we go. Get these wires. Make sure they're not touching the flywheel. Okay, looks good. I'm not going to put the red wire which is it should be the engineers on the right side but it's actually the left side or conductor side in this particular model what i need to do on each of these chassis is figure out how i am going to transfer the frame uh, power to a wire so i can get into the control and i think i'm going to use this hole this is one that held down the control board i'm going to use that hole yeah, yeah i think that's the best idea i'm going to use that hole and I am, yeah, I can't, I can't see anything else on here. So I will use the hole there and I will show you what I'm going to do. But on this side, I will use this hole. That's why I didn't put the wire back in it. I'm gonna use that hole. And that is how I'm going to connect the wire to the frame. And what I did is I actually shaved a bunch of the stuff off of the weight on the heavier one so that I have a flatter surface to work with when I am taping down. Anyway, if you just take a copper or brass piece here that has a hole in it, you can screw that down into the hole. And by the way, I've changed my mind. I'm going to, going to use the back hole on here. So that's all you do. You take a screw and you screw it into there and that will give you a good contact point for your wire. You will not have any luck trying to solder a wire directly onto the frame because um, it's so dense, it won't take enough heat. As you can see here, I have shaved these down and this is so I can put a speaker in there and I'm going to glue it directly to the frame instead of using a base plate for it. So let's go ahead and create the speaker box here. Let's do all the measurements. And this one, I think, I think I can put the speaker in the back. Yeah, I think I can put it back here and it'll be a pretty decent sized speaker box and it'll have plenty of air to move. Yeah, it'll have plenty of air to use. So yeah, I think that's what I can do. Let me kind of measure to make sure it'll clear the flywheel. Well, you know, it definitely will. So I'll definitely have enough room. Okay, so I think after taking some measurements, I can go ahead and create some boxes for these. And yes, I do have a 3D printer. Some people ask, do I have a 3D printer? Yes, I do, but believe it or not, wood is far superior for our making speaker enclosures. Far, far superior for our making speaker enclosures. So I've switched to wood. They sound better, a better base. They're more flexible too, because I can sort of pick and choose um, what size I want to make them on the spot. I can't do that with plastic. I have to reprint everything if I'm going to do that and it's just not worth it. So by printing, excuse me, by cutting mine on the laser cutter, 
it's a lot easier for me to make minor adjustments. Um, and so yeah, anyway, let's go ahead and cut these. There we go. And here's what that looks like in the end. So I have all these pieces. Let's go ahead and assemble them. And like I said, I'm gluing them, this particular one directly to the frame. And a lot of people think that you need a lot of room to have really good sounds. You don't actually. Not if you design your speaker box correctly. That is the key, is finding a way to get a lot of air into that speaker box. And once you do, you can actually do that with a really small amount of space. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and screw in these um, little tiny pieces of brass or copper, whatever they are, so that I can solder a wire to them. Let's go ahead and do them both. We'll just screw, yeah, there we go. And again, you will have no luck trying to solder directly to these frames. You, it, just, it just won't happen, not without destroying the frames. Now we'll go ahead and place the little speakers. And these are tiny, these are uh, 15 millimeter by 11. And you're thinking there's no way those are gonna sound good. You would be absolutely wrong. My speaker boxes have a ton of air in them. And because of that, um, these, these speakers have a lot to work with. All right, let's go ahead and set the DCC controllers in there. And there we go. And okay, I think we are in good shape. All right, excellent. So let's go ahead and after I soldered them in, here is what they look like. So I've got the front and I will show you here in a little bit how I'm going to work these headlights. There are those little strips that I screwed in. And in this particular model, um, right, the wires come up on the engineer's side. Um, and the frame, which is what that contact is gonna be used for, is coming in on the left or the conductor's side. Well, you just gotta remember to place, <laughs> it's gotta remember that the wire coming up from the underneath, which is the red, is actually going to be the negative motor. Um, and again, um, I, I, I'm not gonna take the time in this video to show you how to do a bare wire install. I have, a, I have a bunch of other videos for that. So if you're not sure how to do those, go watch those first, and this will make all the sense in the world, I promise. All right, here we go. I've soldered in my lights and everything, and the same thing with the motor here. The wire colors are reversed from what you think they should be, but that's because I wasn't worried about wire color. I just, <laughs> again, on this particular one, the frame handles the, uh, the red or the engineers or the positive side. So you can see the yellow wire there goes from the contact point I made into the right side of the controller. So, all right. There we have it. I think everything is going to fit in here pretty well. So yeah, all right. I think we're doing we're doing well. So let's go with that. One thing I want to do is try to scale back those hot spots. So I'm going to put some. It's a type of construction paper, but it's a plasticized paper. I'm going to put that down so that um, the those big hot spots don't come through. And I'm not going to try to turn these into like super duper super detailed models. Um, there are some people that can do that. It's not the kind of, kind of time I want to put into this right now. So that's what I'll do. And this one looks like somebody's already tried to take care of some of their hot spotting. Sounds good. Um, so again, some people, I guess I could too, if I wanted to put the kind of time into it, they could really make these super professional looking, but I just want things to be just a little bit better. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work on keeping the hot spots. Uh, at least a lot of the hot spots away from the visible spectrum when you're watching these. Another thing I'm going to do is on the lead locomotive, which is this one, I'm going to put uh, marking lights into it. I might as well. Those holes are pre-drilled. So that's, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that's about as close as I'm going to get to really super detailing these. <laughs> so it's better than nothing, right? So the holes go all the way through. So this will be a perfect opportunity. All right, if we look, you can see the plasticized paper that's gone down. I've put it in the top and that should pretty much stop uh, any kind of light coming through. And then there may be some on the edges or something like that, but 
And I think this will help at least, I don't know, 85-ish percent, somewhere around there. There's the other one. So I think this will do a lot better. And if you look now, I've put the paper um, over, yeah, kind of underneath that with the gap in between it. And that way I can put the light between those two and we won't see a ton of light spilling out into the remainder of the cab. Here's the modifications I made for the fiber optic, which I will put in right now. And this is one millimeter fiber optic. Let's see if I can, uh, this is gonna be a little bit, especially through the camera. So we feed the fiber, uh, we try to feed one of these days. Um, and by the way, the the reflective tape there is just so that I can get more of the light bulb that I'm gonna put in there to bounce around and collect into this fiber optic. Come on, get in there, get in there, there we go. Okay, so we'll push those through and we will leave some of that fiber optic for it to grab the light from the LED. And then we're going to go ahead and just clip um, these fiber optics. Now, a lot of people will sand them so they're nice and smooth. That's really special. Um, I encourage you to do that if that's what you want to do, but this is really meant to be just sort of a quick and dirty here, so I'm not going to do that. I'll push them back a little bit into the holes so that they're not sticking out a ton. And like I said, if I was going to put a lot of super detailed time into this, I would do that. I would take fine sandpaper and sand those down so that they didn't look so rough, but I'm not too worried about it. I just want to get those in there for now. There we go. That'll look plenty good enough. I'm not too worried about it. All right, so we will put a little bit of dry tack down and we will slot the LED in there, get in there, get in there. Just slot the LED, come on. There we go. And now it's stuck between those two pieces of plasticized paper. This is an older LED, it's so big. I had it sitting around and I'm just going to plop that on top of that, um, on top of that post there, and that will work fine for um, absorbing into the fiber optic and giving us those marking lights. So I'll put this in here. We gotta get these little pegs back into the weight. There we go. All right, sounds good. And now we just put in our screws and put everything back together, and we should have a pretty cool running model. All I did there was put these screws back in, and now we'll do this more, I think the more recent of the Bachmans, but that's gonna be the same thing here. We'll just put this in there, we'll dry tack that. And if we center it properly, that little notch on the weight will fit across these wires, absolutely no problem. So I'm gonna get in everything so much harder through the camera, I swear. Things like 10 times as hard. All right, get that down in there. And so, shouldn't be a problem. We'll go ahead and put this back together. Let's see if all my hard work has paid off. We'll start it up. Looks like it's gonna start just fine. Sound, yup. It responds, and if you notice right now, it's on address three. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to change it to 1993, and I am going to, hmm, Runs a little bit, eh, a little bit. I wonder if a wire or something's pushing up. I, I may just loosen the screws a little bit, but it looks okay. I think it's running okay. Yeah, eh, it's fine. I, I'm gonna loosen the screws. I think probably a wire might be brushing up against the flywheels or something like that. No problem, it's a pretty easy fix. And as I was saying, I was going to program this to CV1993. And then what I will do is I will set the consist address to 93 and I will reverse this particular unit since this is going to be the B unit. So we will do that. So now it's taken on the address of 1993. That'll be perfect. And like I said, the other one, the front unit, I'm going to program to 93. The other thing I gotta do is correctly, I, that was an EMD 567. 
Got to change this out to the general electric engine. And there you have it. That sounds a lot more general electric-y, so yay. And uh, well, it still has a little bit of a jerky motion, but I'll figure that out. It won't take me very long. And it sounds like I was using a Nathan 5 chime horn, I think, so I'm going to change this to something a little bit more primitive. I, I could go look up and see what this horn really is, but again, I'm kind of lazy. So I'm just going to find something that looks, that just sounds a little bit more primitive and maybe I'll fix it later. Yes, that's the exact kind of horn that the doctor, namely this doctor, ordered. So yay, that'll, that'll work fine. If you want to know more about what I did with the DCC changes here, um, see one of my other videos. It should have the information you need. All right, well, this video is starting to get a lot longer than I meant it to be. This is supposed to be a nice, simple conversion, but because there were two of these things, I had to run through both, and I hope I have helped you or anyone who's trying to do this sort of thing. This is a fun set. It's an incredibly fun set, and it's this kind of thing that got me back into the hobby. I just love that you can, you know, go out and <laughs> find things that you love and perhaps find a train set that matches that. Of course, it's not prototypical in any way, but as I've said probably almost in every other video, that is not a concern. I like the way it looks, and this is neat. This is just a neat train set. Just look at this thing going around the track. Again, it's a cheap set, and I'd have to take time to put in interior firewalls and stuff like that to stop some of this light bleed through. It wasn't really a big concern. In fact, I'll probably just leave it that way. It's supposed to be kind of a cheap Bachman set, so that's okay. The Bachman actually has a pretty fair amount of pulling power. Yeah, you know, it's they did a pretty good job on this thing. And Bachman's kind of interesting in that a lot of their later stuff, particularly past, you know, about the early 90s, they started to build with more quality. I think they realized that the standards were going up in the hobby and they had to keep pace with that. You can still find this set pretty cheap, especially if you're not worried about getting the box. I think I've seen these as low as 65, even actually 50 something dollars. So um, if that's something you want, go out and get it and do this DCC conversion. You will not be disappointed. But if you remember, there was, there, like I said, there was one other and this is the train set as I got it, but I have others actually I have a few of these, particularly if I could pick them up cheaply, I did. So what we want to see right is both of these pulling and I've created a consist that is chocolatey fun and chocolatey good. But I threw in one non-chocolate car. I'm sure you can find it. It's not going to be any problem because it was just such a fun car. I had to put it in this colorful consist. And, you know, besides, only God is perfect anyway, right? So it should be pretty nifty. There you have it. This, like I said, this video is getting a lot longer than I ever imagined it would be when I first started. This should have been a, I, I don't know, I thought this would be a quick thing, but then I realized, you know what, maybe people would get um, benefit from me doing both of these. So it just turned into a little bit of a, uh, just more than I wanted to do. Since this is running a bit long, I am going to do the full running session on Friday. That's when I'll post the full thing. So if you want to see this really chocolatey goodness running all the way through, it's about eight something minutes, come back on Friday. If you got anything out of this, I would appreciate you liking and uh, it really doesn't cost you anything, I promise, but it does help me. And if you really, really want to help me out, you can comment and subscribe. Subscriptions help me tons. And if part of you wants to help me pay the bills, this isn't a cheap hobby, as you know, then please consider purchasing from one of my sponsors. I've linked everything important down in the description and have a look around. Hopefully there's something you can use. All right, until next time, well, Friday, actually. Take care, stay safe. Happy model railroading. See you soon.
bye for now.